Army recognition is the official news online for Eurostat 3 2024. And during five days, follow us to see the latest news and the latest videos. Welcome to the BAE Systems booth at Eurosatori in 2024. We've got um, quite a broad assortment of, of products that we're you know, showing uh, this year and, and some new announcements as well. So I'm standing right here in front of the uh, CV90, the latest version Mark IV with a 30 millimeter man turret. It's an infantry fighting vehicle well known to all of our allies in Europe. It's used uh, by a lot of countries. And uh, this is uh, the latest version with a manned turret. The CV-90 is also uh, fighting in Ukraine and doing really well. To the left of me, we have the armored multi-purpose vehicle that we're currently producing in five variants for the U.S. Army. What we're showing today is a variant with a 30 millimeter turret. So the vehicle is designed to be very flexible, easy to interchange into different, uh, different variants as the customer may need. And so we're showing an example, one with a turret. You could have it configured to be a mortar vehicle, medevac, mission command. It's in full rate production for the US Army right now uh, in five variants. And uh, behind me is the Beowulf. This is actually the vehicle uh, that is being now fielded in, uh, for the CAT-V program in the US. In fact, this one is going from the show straight uh, to the U.S. And uh, we're showcasing this. It's a capability for all kinds of climates. It can be armored, it swims, and so a, a great solution for, for many militaries around the world. It's a different version of the BVS-10. The BVS-10 is a heavy armored version of this. This was designed for the American Cat V called uh, weather, uh, you know, called weather all-terrain vehicle. It's 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 a, just a different variant. The vehicle, uh, even with an armor package, can actually get into the water, and it will use the um, the rubber track as a propulsion system and get to the other side of a river or a lake. So it's not amphibious in the sense of sea state. It's amphibious in terms of the mission is to cross bodies of water. And that's what makes it all terrain because it can climb steep hills and cross bodies of water and so forth. So the howitzer behind me is the now famous M777. And I say famous because it's done a really great job in Ukraine and, and it is very much in, uh, engaged there. And so we're showing um, that at the show here because there is a bit of a renaissance of towed artillery because of its mobility and ability to provide uh, 155 millimeter artillery capability in a, in a very mobile and lightweight package. This can be picked up by a Chinook, for example. So that's how it was designed for that requirement. So that's uh, what we're showcasing, a lot of interest in that. As we're shifting here and speaking about guns and, and artillery, so this is our new offering. It's the Tridon. And if you look at um, the design here, this is uh, based on our 40 millimeter naval weapon system that is very light, auto loaded, and it can use the uh, 3P projectiles that work really well against, against uh, UAS and UAV targets because they're, they're the bursting munitions. So we've adopted that to a, a truck chassis. It can be lowered, it could be left as a stationary thing, or it could be moving with a truck. 
So that's a new offering, and we're very excited about this. It's a huge need right now. The Ukraine war is showing the importance of being able to have counter UAS capability. This Bofors is not 40 millimeter is not very old. It's a new redesign, of course. But uh, even the naval version, right, it uses uh, uh, the latest technology that we have in Bofors. So this is the M88A2 recovery vehicle. And it is, uh, we're seeing really an increased demand of that because in Europe, especially on the eastern side, there is an uptick in procurements of tank and, you know, people are building heavy army solutions. And the M88 becomes a key recovery asset. So it comes with the tanks, but it's also able to recover all other heavy tracked vehicles. And besides just recovery, it also provides the ability to repair vehicles in battle. So behind me is the ACV, Armored uh, Combat Vehicle, for the U U.S. Marine Corps. We've developed this jointly with the VECO, so we're the, uh, we're the prime in the, in the U.S. providing this to the Marine Corps. It has full ship-to-shore capability, it's heavily armored, and it can survive sea stage 3. This is a true amphibious solution, not just crossing bodies of water, but actually ship-to-shore operations, and then of course when it comes out on land, it's wheeled and just as nimble on the ground, fast and, and, and able to really engage in, in the mission. So um, quite versatile. What we're showing here is a variant that is being developed with a 30 millimeter unmanned turret. So the variants we're producing for the Marine Corps don't have this solution yet, but this is something that's being uh, evaluated uh, by the Marine Corps, the capability of having a 30 millimeter turret. So we at BA Systems obviously are systems integrators of different platforms. We work with a customer to understand what is needed and then work with our supply chain and partners to help create those solutions for the U.S. market but also for international markets. One of the things we recognize in international engagement is localization, very important because, you know, we produce things for the U.S. market we recognize that um, you know, to expand that capacity, we have to produce things locally and, and work with our partners in different countries. So as there is a, the demand increases for using some of these platforms that we manufacture in Europe and in other parts of the world, we always work jointly with local industry, local supply chains to provide a complete self-sustainable solution for the local military in a given country. Thank you. Good afternoon, exactly, and welcome on our booth. Uh, the concept is to improve the protection of the vehicle. Uh, it's not only the metal that is around the vehicle, it's also all the sensors and the system that will gather information, digest it, merge it, and bring it back to the soldier. You can see behind me, we have lots of sensors on this vehicle. The main ones is the laser warning system that also works with the gunshot detector. Those two systems will warn uh, the team of different threats, they will classify it, they will propose a solution, a reaction. When you have the telemetry, you don't react the same way as when you have a missile or a laser designator or things like that. And all the reactions are pre-programmed in the system and the system will propose to the crew the right reaction. This VAB in this configuration is not a pure anti-tank vehicle. It's a, a vehicle with an anti-tank capacity, but inside the vehicle, you still have um, other missiles for um, soldiers on foot to make the classical anti-tank mission. It's mainly if you have an opportunity to shoot a very interesting target, you can do it. Because with the 0.5 caliber, 
you're quite limited. As I told you, there are quite numerous sensors and effectors on the vehicle. You can see the laser warning system from Saab. You have uh, the cameras from Bertin Technology, and there are the smoke grenades from Lacroix, which are part of the Pronoia uh, project um, driven by the DGA. It's very important. And then you can see on the side, it's a radio system with millimeter wave technology. So it's LPI, LPD, low probability interception, low probability detection, which is very interesting for us to exchange the different threats the different vehicles can see so that uh, you have a collaborative protection amongst the different ve vehicles. Scarabe, uh, we presented six years ago, uh, was an answer to a new program for France. Scarabe is the first hybrid military vehicle. So you have a 300 horsepower uh, diesel engine and you have a 100 horsepower electric motor. So today we're still using it to try to improve the strategy regarding this, see how the battery behaves under high temperature, low temperature, how many kilometers we can drive only on electric, what is the best strategy for filling the batteries. So it's a test bench for batteries, but it's not only for this, it's also for robotics. If you come with me, I can show you. For example, it has been completely equipped for robotics and we are making uh, many tests. Here you have one of the antennas, one of the cameras, there are cameras all around. The idea here is to see how uh, eight ton vehicles uh, remote control react and what is the human machine interface you need. And this is something very important because when you drive a vehicle, you drive it with your feelings, you have sensations. Um, weapon system, here you have, uh, we have used our Ornet T1 uh, remote control weapon system and we are trying to transform it to make a protection against drones. Drones is very high threat actually. So what we have done, we have removed um, the smoke grenades and we have put a radar a classical radar and a radio frequency radar. Then we are developing softwares to help guess the trajectory of the object. And we are working with the LGA 40 millimeter with a burst munition uh, to try to bring him down. So last system I can present you on the Scarabe today is this little box with a daytime star tracker. It's made by Soderna. Uh, it's a small company that uh, proposed a camera that sees the stars even during daylight. With this system, during daylight, you can still see the stars and you can be sure that your GPS is correct or not. So it's a very interesting technology, comes from the plane and uh, intercontinental miss missiles. First of all, it's called trailer, which is the contraction for drone and trailer. Because from the beginning, we think the robots must be towable by any vehicle, because you don't need to get a truck to, to bring it where you need to, to, to use it. The idea is to propose to the customer a platform with 700 payload and with a maximum weight of 1.7 tons that will fit most of the requirements of the customers. 700 kilos is what you have in most of the vehicles once you have put all the men's inside. You don't really need more. We can do more, but it's not useful. When you stay at 1.7 ton, you can still put it under sling under an helicopter. If you get a three tons, it's much more complex. So we have a platform which is, which is dual. It's already validated in the French army. It is a diesel electric propulsion, very important. So you can run for about 100 kilometers on electric and 100 kilometers on diesel. We have presented here with, um, with a RCW S.50, like if it was working with an infantry company. I want you to imagine whatever you want on it, because you can put 700 kilos here, um, there is a reinforced structure just under, so you can put whatever you want. An arm, electronic warfare, whatever. What is interesting on this vehicle is that we have uh, heavily modified the, uh, the, the civilian basis uh, with the four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering. So the vehicle can, can go as fast in front or rear mode. And it's also very helpful when you are towing your robots and you have to go reverse. So it's a great help. Hi, I'm Guillaume from Ornet, and uh, Ornet is a business unit of Arcus, specialized in the development and the export of remote control weapon station. We take the French Scorpion program remote control weapon station, the Ornet T1, T2, and T3, and we create Ornet remote control weapon station for export markets.
This year uh, at Eurosatory, we present the Ornet Stealth Protection. Ornet uh, Stealth Protection is basically the same remote control weapon station of the French Army, but we develop the Ornet with Stealth Protection with a laser warning system and an acoustic detector. When you use, use your weapon, uh, remote control weapon station, for example, an MBT uh, range finds uh, your armored vehicle, the laser warning system will detect the range finder of the MBT and directly put the remote control weapon station in direction of the threats. AM General is uh, in partnership with Arcus for long year now, and we collaborate on SCWS in particular uh, on uh, CURIS uh, SCWS. Hornet Air Guard is basically the same remote control weapon station, the Hornet T1, but uh, on the second ring, we replace the smoke launcher with a jammer and omnidirectional detection and uh, directional detection. We have a range of uh, seven remote control weapon stations, the Hornet Stealth Protection with two axes, the Hornet T1, just the remote control weapon station, the Hornet Air Guard, the Hornet Acheron with a NVIDIA MMP Acheron, the Hornet Sight, which uh, equipped the URBC Jaguar in French Army, and the Hornet Light, uh, which is a smaller remote control weapon station. The Hornet can be integrated on any vehicle, uh, MBT or light vehicle, we integrate the Hornet on a French Scorpion program, but we also uh, integrate Hornet on Arcus competitors' vehicle, like uh, IM General. IM General is a competitor of Arcus and a partner for Arcus.